Wow. Welcome back to another episode of Cuisine TV where we quiz the cuisine. Um, unfortunately, I'm by myself today. Um, obviously, we've gone into tier four lockdown here in London, so no restaurant eating. So what we've gone for is a takeaway and I'm having to do it by myself. So no martyr. Um, some more food for me, I guess. What are we trying today? We are trying the wondrous, the great Japanese cuisine. Japanese cuisine is essentially rice, seafood, noodles, but it's also got a lot of influence from the West. So you might see, I don't know, um, hamburgers in there, spaghetti in there, um, various other kind of Western, Western food but it's also got some influence from China. It's neighboring countries, as we've seen throughout most cuisines, neighboring countries add a massive impact to various cuisines. So you're gonna see some ramen, you're gonna see some dumplings, some gyoza, you're gonna see some curry type dishes. So Japanese cuisine has all of that, but it's known for, it's known for its raw fish, its sashimi, its sushi, it's rice, and that's what we're gonna try today. And I cannot wait today from Mario Sushi in Leighton slash Walthamstow. Without further ado, we're gonna have to wait. We're gonna have to order it. So let's go ahead and order it. Yeah. Wait a minute. Japanese. Let's try Mario Sushi. Now I tell you what, the food is looking amazing. The spread that we have, I literally cannot wait to try, cannot wait to try. Um, we have various different items. We have some raw, some cooked, some very influenced food, um, and even some soup. And that's exactly what we're gonna start off with. We're gonna start off with the famous, famous miso soup. Miso soup comes like this. Now, the miso soup is a traditional Japanese soup. The Japanese use to either start a, a, a meal or accompany a meal or even finish a meal. And it's got dashi stock, sometimes some soy, some seaweed. Here I can see some sesame seeds as well, and it's served hot. So this is a very, very good good starter just to cleanse your palate just to you know get that warmth in especially in this cold cold weather um miso soup is a good start to uh, to any meal so so i'm gonna go ahead and and try it wow i love it i love a miso soup now i generally with miso soups add a bit of soy sauce in just to add that extra kind of saltiness to it but this is already quite salty so it really really does have a lot of flavor and the stock itself is somewhat fishy it, to me it's a bit of a mystery but it's somewhat fishy and um, and you can taste the bits of soy that come in the chunks of soy and also some kind of slithers of of seaweed and um, very good soup to start off the meal so now we move on to i would say the most famous famous uh, japanese dish or dishes um we have a selection of sushi rolls um so we're going to start with the general standard sushi roll the maki which is this now what what makes this a uh, uh, maki is basically rice, so sushi rice um, with some seaweed wrapped around. And the interesting thing about this is it's this most simple variation. It's got one ingredient here. The one ingredient that we've gone for is the spicy tuna. Spicy tuna maki. We're going to go and give this a try. Dip it in your, your soy. Mm. Mm. 
Wow, that does have a kick. What the Japanese love, and you might not know, is mayo. And what they've done is covered the maki, the spicy tuna maki, with spicy mayo. And that gives it a really, really nice kick. The rice, sticky and soft, just how the Japanese love it. And the Japanese love their rice and you have to have it in a particular way for sushi. So nice and sticky. And obviously this is cased nicely in some seaweed. So this is a great, great start for our sushi roll platter. Now we move to something that a lot of sushi bars, a lot of sushi place, um, and even your franchise sushi shops, your wasabis, your, your itsus, they have, and is very common in the West, of uh, of america it's called colloquially it's called the california roll but in japanese it's the uramaki okay and what we've gone for again spicy variation raw but this time it's salmon spicy salmon uramaki now if i show you what the uramaki looks like if i can keep it apart you can tell straight away it's a little bit different to the standard maki. Uh, why is that? Because the rice is on the outside and the filling, which is the spicy salmon, but also cucumber is in the inside, but that's encased by the seaweed. So rice on the outside, seaweed. And it's the way the sushi roll is constructed, which makes it so different. So we're gonna try this, dip it in our soy sauce, Mm. Delicious. Delicious. Salmon is fresh. Cucumbers gives it a nice refreshing flavor. And again, that spiciness of that Japanese spice infused mayo is so good. Really, really nice. Um, all right, so finally, of our sushi platter, we're gonna try the cooked variation. So we tried the tuna and the salmon, which was um, which was raw, but now we're gonna try the cooked prawn futamaki. Now, what's the difference here? If I pick this out, the futamaki is, you can tell, slightly thinner than the makis, um, slightly thinner than the urumaki, it's a thin sheath, but what's happened is the construction, again, it's got a little bit of an overlap. So when you're building the sushi roll, there's a bit of an overlap, a bit more rice, flatter, and a bit more when it comes to the filling. And in this case, what we've gone for is a cooked prawn, some salad in there, uh, it looks like some cucumber as well, and again, topped off with a beautiful, um, spicy Japanese mayonnaise so without further ado let's uh, let's dip and and eat mm. really good really good again very very nice the the, the fillings cooked prawn refreshing refreshing rather um cucumber there's a lot of rice to it good big bites no wonder we've got six pieces of the futamaki as opposed to the eight pieces of the others and a lot of rice and um, but very very good lettuce gives it a good crunch and again topped off with that beautiful beautiful japanese spicy mayonnaise uh, to give it that real kick um afterwards so um yeah great great sushi platter all right so now what we move into is something that i wish marty was here to try um his favorite his absolute favorite these are dumplings now dumplings in the east are also known as gyoza nice pastry like uh, we've gone for the prawn gyoza um they're nice and warm um, and it's fried is fried and this gyoza interesting fact is basically um something that was taken from almost like a chinese influenced dish 
that the Japanese now love. We're gonna give we're gonna give this a go. We're gonna dip and we're gonna try this nice fried gyoza. Wow. That is delicious. It's filled with chives, the prawn, maybe even some kind of potato. It is so nice, refreshing. And um, the prawns are cooked really nicely. The crispiness of the exterior shell of the gyoza, so like the, the kind of lining of it is so nice, but the inside is so soft, nice and hot, nice and warm. Um, it is a very, very good um, dish. I, all right, so we've got another platter for you here today. Um, very, very nice looking platter. Um, we've got a nigiri and some sashimi. Now, what are those? Well, the nigiri is a type of sushi where we have the sticky rice at the bottom and the protein or, or whatever you might want to put at the top, almost covering the top. And what we've gone for is a seared salmon nigiri. Very, very nice looking, uh, nice looking uh, piece of, of, of food. And it takes real craft and skill to make nigiri. If you see it, they build the nigiri in their hands, the rice in their hands, and finely place the bit of fish over the top with a beautiful, beautiful finish. Without further ado, let's let's give the let's give the nigiri a try. I'm gonna dip it into some soy sauce. Now, one thing that I probably should have mentioned is with the nigiri, we get a bit of wasabi. So Mmm. Oh wow. That's really good. That's really good. Nice chunk of rice um, and a really nicely cooked salmon, if I do say so myself. Seared, so not completely cooked through, but got the kind of the grilled lines on them. Something I've never tasted before, or not that type of nigiri. Um, very, very nice. Um, got some sesame seeds there as well, and you can taste the wasabi used underneath. Wasabi and almost mayonnaise, they use underneath to join the fish and the rice together. Um, very, very good. And you... now, some may not agree, some may not like it. Some may endure it in the sushi because you probably don't taste it as much, but this, is a very, very traditional, but also it shows the quality of the fish available at these particular restaurants. We are going to try a very strange looking, if I have to say so myself, tuna sashimi. This is raw fish, raw tuna cut from the nicest part of the tuna. And the way you eat this is very, very simple. Just as we've been eating most of the sushi, we dip it in our soy sauce. We have a bit of, potentially we have a bit of wasabi. We dip into our soy sauce and we indulge. So I'm gonna do just that. Mmm, that is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You can tell, quality of the fish is so nice, so light. Um, it's not chewy, tough at all, it's so, so tender. Actually, the grooves make it quite easy to just kind of bite into. It's almost like little pieces of Toblerone um, that you get, and you can just kind of bite in and, and, and eat that. We've got a really, really interesting um, dish for you here now. 
we've got the prawn katsu curry. What is a katsu curry? So the prawn katsu is prawn battered and covered with panko breadcrumbs, like so. Now the curry side of things is where we got our sticky rice, so your sushi sticky rice, and this is now drizzled with a beautiful, beautiful, tart Japanese curry sauce. And the whole idea of it is they've got rice, so the rice, they put the katsu, so you can have chicken, beef, maybe not beef, chicken, but the popular ones are chicken katsu or the prawn katsu on top, and it is then drenched in this wonderful Japanese curry sauce. But generally speaking, this is very, very wholesome, very, very kind of warm. And uh, let's eat. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. That is very, very good. The panko breadcrumbs are one of my favorite types of breadcrumbs. They're really light, really flaky. Um, they don't give you that kind of taste of, of eating cereal, if you know what I mean. You know, like the cornflakes. Some breadcrumbs make it feel, or some kind of batter makes it feel like that. Panko is really light, uh, so beautiful on the prawn. Prawns are cooked really well. Rice, again, sticky, stodgy, just the way uh, you want rice to be when you're trying to eat with chopsticks. Um, but also this sauce. This curry sauce is quite special. If you imagine, and I know it sounds weird, but if you imagine the kind of curry sauce that you get at a chip shop, it's basically like that. Sweet and sour, got a nice kick to it, smooth. It's almost like a gravy. It's almost like a gravy. So it's, it's got like a meaty kind of taste to it. Um, and it's very, very good. Usually so what a meal we have, or I have just had. There's no we here today, fortunately. Um, very, very good Japanese cuisine. We had a beautiful, beautiful spread of hot, cold, raw, cooked, and slightly influenced uh, dishes for for you today. Um, finished most of it, or finished all of it. Very, very good, good selection. And honestly, Japanese cuisine is one of my favorites. If it's done well, it is done very, very, very well. Um, but experience overall, very, very good. Love Japanese food, love Japanese cuisine, and I absolutely, love going to Japanese restaurants so a bummer that this had to be a takeaway but a really good takeaway nonetheless um I hope you enjoyed this video you know what to do make sure you like comment subscribe um, click that bell for notifications when we release our videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m please 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 make sure you continue to support subscribe like comment check us out on instagram we have a tiktok make sure you check us out on tiktok as well for really really good recipes that we've been given uh, through the first uh, quarantine and now maybe even the the next one um until next time bye